fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called to them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel that we heard here today is really telling they're the beginning of the ministry of Jesus in a full sense. For here it was, we find the conditions, that is, the arrest of his cousin John. And therefore there was an unsettled condition in the world in which he lived. Then he proclaimed a message, and the message was to be for all people, but also in particular for those who would be following him and helping him in distributing the message. So he says to repent, it was a call, it was a change of life that was called to not only the disciples, but to all people. Repent, change your ways, part of what an activist is called to do and say. And so we see him calling Peter and his brother Andrew, where they were fishermen, and he said he'd make them fishers of men. And he called James, his brother John. These were the original four. And they too left their boat immediately, sort of an immediate removal. Maybe they wanted to get away and that was an opportunity they had to do it. So they, he called them and he called them because there's a mission to do, an urgency in the world. The word of God had to be spread among all. And this is a Sunday that we celebrate the Word of God. It's something that has become very important for us because it brings us into the focus of our scriptures and how they are related. It's also the middle of the Feast of the Octave of, uh, for all people who are together, the Unity Octave. And uh, we're getting ready for the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. Uh, this week and so where we think about other people who are Christians too and who have a reverence for the Bible and as we think of them and what we do we remember that we are to be reverent in the way in which we approach this for the urgency is there today and it's found in scripture how we are to respond to it and so as we look for that a little more carefully, we see that, well, it's important for us to call upon the Holy Spirit to help us because we do not have all of the wherewithal to do this perfectly. And the Holy Spirit gives us that extra oomph, that energy, that ability to respond to the immediacy of the times. And so we're calling upon the Spirit to come to help us in the work in which we've got to do. And the Word of God, then we respect it very much. We respected it when we carry the book, which is the Gospels, up to the uh, podium here. 
We respect it when we kiss that book because it's God's word in a very special way. And the gospels are in the New Testament, the prime words of the Lord. And so we think also about our brothers and sisters of the Jewish tradition who take that first five books of the Old Testament and they have a great reverence for the Torah and show that reverence in the way in which they handle the books themselves. So as we look upon this, we see that reverence is one aspect, but also the word itself is very important because we are to be people of the word. The Hebrews themselves, uh, the root word for word and for deed are the same and therefore there is that need for us to think of taking a word that we say or do and make it something that we truly do. Just not pretending, just not mouthing ourselves, but not thinking of what is being said, but rather intending to do what we say and take seriously the words that we have. Word is very important. I can think of the time when my father, uh, we had just sold the cattle that we had for that year to, a, to one of these buyers that came by and he knew him and trusted him. But then, right after that, the price went way up. And so yeah, that was a strange affair that this cattle are still there. It was only by the spoken word of my father. And so I said to him, well, there's nothing in writing. Why don't you go and sell them on your own? And he turned and looked at me and I remember the very spot in the shop where it occurred. And he said, but it's on my word. It was on his word that he had said that, and though it cost us, well, maybe thousands of dollars, it still was his word, and that cost is remembered very much as part of the lesson I learned. Is you have, when you say the word, you should mean it. We don't always do that. Think of the words that were said at baptism, the vows that we made, and think of the things that we have done different from what we said, that we would avoid the evil one and do only what the Lord prompts us to do. Our word is something that we have to constantly look at ever more carefully. See it as something that, that we value with great truth. And then if we look at it and the greatness of which it is, we find that the word of God, which means the scripture itself, is something that's given to us we listen, we hear, we read, and then we are to perform. Make the word effective, as it says in a number of times in Scripture. Success, only success is what we really want from saying, doing the word. So the word of God is important for us all as individuals, but it's also for our country and world. We are to be people of the word. When we say that our democracy is at work at this time, and it is a period which is very trying, both because of administration's changes, but also because of the pandemic that affects us all in many ways. But we are people of the word. And if we are, then our democracy must be fulfilled in what we do and to what we have said. And so we look again at the word. The word of God, precious in itself, coming to us. And as Jesus showed that urgency, that tremendous urgency to go out and to tell others that they must repent now, the now didn't stop at his time. The now means today. It means that we replace him in uh, saying the word to others. Therefore, the spread of the word is to be done by the disciples and their successors, who include us. We spread the word so that others may hear, understand, read about it in the scriptures themselves, and come to believe what the Lord has given us to do. As we look back over what has happened in our life, we know we have perfectly done what was called to do. But it's always the day to start. It's the now. The now is from now to the end of what we have 
that we can say and do. And so as we think about that, we refer to ourselves as the ones who pass on that word to others, the word of God. Let's reverence it. Let's proclaim it. Just